Hello dear learners and viewers, welcome to you all. Hope you are well. Our today's class is the continuation of our previous class. In our last class, we talked about, in short, the biography of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Before starting our today's session, let me show you some photographs. Okay. Can you guess whose pictures, whose photographs are these and what is he doing? Well, these are the photographs of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman who was delivering his historic 7th March speech in 1971. Well, it was a historic moment and it is an unforgettable history in our national life. So, dear students, our today's topic is the unforgettable history and you will get it in Unit 1, Lesson 1. Bangabandhu's historic speech of 7th March in 1971, Bangabandhu started delivering his speech at 45 past 2 p.m. and he continued it 3 past 3 p.m. Duration approximately 19 minutes. Theme, Independence of Bangladesh. Bangabandhu delivered it at Rescourse Moedan. Now it is known as Sohravardi Buddhan. UNESCO recognized the 7th March speech of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman as a part of the world's documentary heritage. This historic speech is often considered as one of the most influential speeches over the world. Now, dear learners, I am going to discuss the text, the historic speech of 7th March in 1971. My brothers, I stand before you today with a heart overflowing with grief. From the very beginning of the speech, Bangabandhu said that he stood before his countrymen with a heavy heart. You are fully aware of the events that are going on and understand their import, that means their int int importance. We have been trying to do our best to cope with the situation. Bangabandhu said that he tried his level best to keep pace with the situation. And yet, unfortunately, the streets of Dhaka, Chittagong, Khulna, Rashahi and Rangpur are awash with the blood of our brothers. Despite that, the people of his countrymen are mercilessly killed in different cities. The people of Bengal now want to be free. The people of Bengal now want to live and the people of Bengal now want their rights. Mangabandhu said that now the people of Bengal wants to be free. They, wants, they want their right. What have we done that was wrong? After the election, the people of Bangladesh voted as one for me, for the Awami League. We were to sit in the National Assembly, draft a constitution for ourselves there and build our country. The people of this land would thereby get economic, political and cultural freedom. Bangabandhu said that since the Awami League won in the election, but they couldn't sit in the assembly. They were supposed to sit in the assembly to draft a constitution for his countrymen so that his countrymen will get uh, economic, political and cultural freedom. But it is with regret that I have to report to you today we have passed through 23 tragic years. Then Bangabandhu said that, but during these 20 years the Pakistani rulers only uh, they tortured the people of East Pakistan. So, the 23 years of a history of men and women in agony. The history of Bengal is the history of a people who have repeatedly made their highest crimson with their blood. In the history of Bengal, we see very often we have to shed bloods. We shed blood in 1952 for our mother tongue. Even though we were the victors in the election of 1954, we couldn't form a government then. Though we were the victors in the election of 1954, but we couldn't form the government. 
In 1958, Ayub Khan declared martial law, Bawai, to enslave us for the next 10 years. In 1966, when we launched six-point movements, then the Pakistani rulers they mercilessly killed our countrymen on 7th June. When after the movement of 1969, Ayub Khan fell from the power and Yehia Khan assumed their reign of the government, he declared that he would give us a constitution and restore democracy. When Ayub Khan fell from the power, Yehia Khan now assumed the power and then he gave a, gave a promise that he would restore democracy. But we, li we listened to him, we believed him. A lot has happened since then, the election have taken place. I met President Yehia Khan. I have made a request to him not only on behalf of Bengal, but also as the leader of the party, which has the majority in Pakistan. I said to him, you must hold the session of the National Assembly on 15th January. Bangabandhu met Mr. Yehia and requested him to hold the session of National Assembly. But he didn't listen to me, but he didn't listen to Bangabandhu, rather he listened to Mr. Bhutto. At first he said that the meeting would take place in the first week of March. We said fine, we will be taking our seats in the assembly then. When Yehia Khan declared that they are going to hold the session in the first week of March, Bangabandhu said that yes, we are going to take seats in the assembly. But Mr. Assembly then. I said, we will have carry out our discussion in the assembly. I went so far to say that if anyone came up with an offer that was just, even though we were in the majority, we would agree to that offer. That means Bangabandhu uh, showed his democratic attitude. He was very liberal. I declared that assembly would continue to meet, but suddenly on the 1st of March, the assembly was shut down. But Mr. Yehia Khan prorogued the session all on a sudden. Mr. Yehia Khan called the session of the assembly in his capacity of the president and I declared I would be attending it. Okay, then Mr. Yehia Khan called the session again and Bangabandhu declared that I would be attending it. Mr. Bhutto said he won't be the part, he won't be part of it, but Mr. Bhutto said he won't join the assembly. 35 members of the assembly came from West Pakistan to take part in the proceedings, but it was dissolved on all a sudden. And then the blame was put on the people of Bengal and finger was pointed at me. I mean, they also blamed Bangabandhu. After the assembly sessions were prorogued, the people of this country protested. I told them, observe the general strike we have called peacefully. Then Bangabandhu requested his countrymen to observe the general strike peacefully. I told them, shut down all mills and factories. Our people responded to my call. Then the countrymen, they followed, they responded to Bangabandhu and they uh, observed the general strike peacefully. They came to the state spontaneously. They expressed their firm determination to carry out the struggle peacefully. What have we got in return? Those who brought arms with our money to defend us from external enemies, now using those arms on the poor, the receipt and the downtrodden people of the land. Then Mangabandhu expressed his grief that we have bought, we have bought arms with our money. Why? to protect our country from external enemies. But now, the Pakistani rulers, they are using those arms to kill us, to kill the people of East Pakistan. Bullets are being aimed at their heart. We constitute the majority of Pakistan. But whenever we, Beng we Bengalis have tried to assume power, they have used force on us. Then Bangabandhu said that we were the majority uh, of Pakistan, but whenever we tried to get our power, then they forced, they used force on us. I have had a talk with Mr. Yehia Khan. I told him, Mr. Yehia, you are the president of Pakistan. 
come and observe how the poor people of my country are being mowed down with bullets how the poor people of my country are mercilessly killed come and see how our mothers are being deprived of their children how how my people are being massacred come and observe and only then pass judgment on what is going on come and see what is going on then pass a judgment he has apparently said that i had agreed to attend a round table conference on the 10th of march didn't i say i a long time back what is the another point of another round table conference then mr yehi khan said that uh, i am uh, supposed to attend the round table conference but didn't i say that what is the uh, use of joining another round table conference of attending another round table conference should i sit with those who have shed the blood of my people should i sit with the killers of my brother he has suddenly dissolved the assembly without carrying out any discussion with me then he dissolved the assembly without consulting with me without talking with me after sitting a secret meeting of 5 hours he gave a speech where he has put all the blame on me then mr yahya hold a secret meeting and uh, he gave a speech and then he, uh, and then he has put all the blame on bangabandhu sheik mujibur rahman he has even blamed the bengali people my brothers the assembly has been called into session on 25th of march but blood spilled on our street has not yet dried about the 10th of this month i told them i have told them mujibur rahman on join the round table conference because that would mean wading over the blood that has been shed if i join the another round table conference on 10th of march that means i am betraying with my countrymen although you have called the assembly into session you have to listen to my demands first that bangabandhu told him that first of all you have to listen to my demands first then i will consider whether or not i will join the meeting you will have to listen to my demands first you will have to withdraw martial law then bangabandhu said that you have to do many things first one you have to withdraw martial law then to return all army personnel to their barracks and third to investigate all the way our people have been murdered and to transfer power to the representative of the people and it is only then bangabandhu will decide he will attend the assembly or not i don't want the prime minister's office we want the people of this country men to have their rights bangabandhu firmly announced that he wants the rights of his country men i wants to state clearly that from this day bangladesh is court magistracy government offices and educational institution will be shut down indefinitely will be shut down uh, sine die so that the poor don't have to suffer so that my people don't have to go through hardship all other things will be exempted from the general strike from tomorrow rickshaws horses carriages trains and launches will be allowed to move only the secretariat a supreme court the high court just court and the semi government organization such as wabda will not be allowed to work here we see that bangabandhu uh, is very foresighted considering the sufferings of the common people of our country he said that rickshaw horse carriers trains and launches will be allowed to move okay on the 28th employees will go and collect their salaries if the salaries are not paid if another bullet is pierced if my people are shot dead again i request all of you convert every houses into a fort confront the enemies with whatever you have then bangabandhu said that on the 20th instant employees will go to the bank and they will collect their salaries but if they are not given their salaries and if they are killed then convert every houses into a fort confront enemies with 
whatever you have and even at the risk of your life and even if i am not around to direct you shut down all the shops and make sure that the traffic all all roads and ports are brought to a standstill if needed be we will starve to death but we will go down striving for our rights to those in the armed force i have this to say you are my brothers stay in your barracks and no one will bother you then he told the armed forces that don't try to shoot anymore stay in your own place in your barrack nobody will disturb you but don't try to aim your bullets at our chest you can't suppress 70 million people forever since we have learned to sacrifice ourselves no one can suppress us anymore and as for our martyrs and those who have been wounded we in the awami league will do everything we can to assist them and their loved ones and then he said during these years those who who have been killed or who have been wounded we the awami league will try our level best to help them if you have the means please give what little you can to our relief committee then he requested his countrymen those who have the capacity try to give uh, their little whatever they can to our relief camp so that they can help the poor people to the owners of the factories whose workers had participated in general strike in the last 7 days i have this to say make sure that they are paid wages for those days and during this seven days strike the workers who have participated in this strike they should be paid their salaries he requested the owners of this factory factories to the government employees i have this to tell you have to listen to my directives till our country is liberated taxes and customs duties won't be collected no one will pay them either remember the enemy is amidst us to create chaos and confusion bangabandhu is a, a, a was really very foresighted he could easily understood that there are some enemies among us and for this why for this reason he a, make us conscious that uh, the enemies get, can any time create chaos and uh, anarchy so that and they can loot also so in that case we must be aware of the fact in our bengal hindus and muslims bengalis and non bengalis are all brothers we are responsible for their safety let us not taint ourselves in any way remember those of you who work for the radio and television if the people running the radio station are not listen to us no bengali will report for their work then he gives directive uh, to the workers of radio and television banks will be open for 2 hours every day so that the people can collect their salaries but we want to allow even a single paisa to be transferred from east pakistan to west pakistan telephones and telegram service will continue as before in our east bengal if we have to transmit news abroad you will to see that but if any attempt is might to exterminate our people all bengalis must take appropriate action but if any attempt to kill our people then all bengali must take appropriate action they will revolt against it they will protest it from revolutionary committee under the leadership of awami league in every village every community be prepared to act with whatever you have in your possession remember since we have already had to shed blood we will have to shed a lot more of it by the grace of god however we will be able to liberate the people of this land the struggle this time is a struggle for freedom the struggle this time is a struggle for emancipation long live bengal the speech has been translated by fakrul alam professor of english university of dhaka now dear students 
Now I shall talk about the appreciating features of the space. Okay. Bangabandhu offered the suffering of the people of East Pakistan inflicted by the West Pakistani rulers. Provides directives for the emancipation of the people from the shackles of Pakistani rulers. This speech reflects the democratic attitude of Bangabandhu. Bangabandhu called for a strike but rickshaw, horse driven carriers, trains and launches were not included it so that poor and downtrodden people won't suffer for it. This speech also reveals the protest against brutality against the brutality and injustice of the autocratic ruler of West Pakistan. And finally, Bangabandhu declares the independence of Bangladesh. Now, dear learners, these are his famous books. First one, Ashmapta Atto Jiboni, The Unfinished Memoirs, Karagare Rose Namsa, The Prisons Diaries, and the last one, Amar Dekha Noya Chin. To know him very well, to know his ideology, you should read this, all these books. Now, dear learners, now I shall talk about fill in the blanks with appropriate words. Okay, you will get it in question number four in your question paper. You, here you see, the assembly has been called into session on the 25th of March, but the blood spilled on, on our street has not yet been yet dried. About the 10th of this month, I have told them, Mujibur Rahman won't join another roundtable conference because that would mean wading over the blood that has been shed. Although you have called the assembly into session, you will have to listen to my demands first. You have to withdraw martial law. You have to return to all army personnel to their barracks. You will have to investigate the way our people have been murdered. And you will have to transfer the power of the representatives of the people. It is only then I will decide whether we will take our seats in the assembly or not. I don't want the Prime Minister's office, Prime Minister's office. We want the people of this country to have their rights. So that is all for today, dear students. Now it is your duty to read the text thoroughly and I hope you will do better in the coming examination. No more today. Thank you. Bye.